بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سو ٹوڈے وی وڈ بی ڈسکسنگ دی انٹروڈکشن آف دی کورس دیٹ از رینیویبل انرجی سورسز سو آئی ایم پروفیسر ڈاکٹر فرید خان سو رینیویبل انرجی وٹ از رینیویبل انرجی سورسز اور وٹ از دی ڈیفینیشن آف اے رینیوبل انرجی رینیوبل سورسز آر نیچرل سورسز دیٹ کین بی ریپلنشڈ ان اے شارٹ پیریڈ آف ٹائم بائی ریپلنشڈ وی مینس ٹو فل سم تھنگ اپ اگین سو دس سارٹ آف انرجی ایکچولی فل اور فل اٹ سیلف اگین وتھ دی پیسج آف ٹائم اینڈ ایسینشلی ان ایگزاسٹیبل انرجی ریسورس on a human time scale so as long as humans are here as long as the world is here this sort of energy would be on the planet earth it would be in the uh, universe and we could utilize uh, that energy so it renews itself by the natural phenomena which have been created by the almighty allah and uh, we could utilize that so we call it a renewable energy so the examples of renewable energy are the hydro energy hydro energy means the energy in uh, water moving water flowing water the hydraulic energy which is available in the uh, flowing water such as uh, rivers streams and in moving water uh, such as ocean water in which we have waves so that energy uh, is there on the planet earth since uh, it has been created by the almighty allah and it would be here uh, till the day of uh, judgment another source of renewable energy is wind so as long as we have uh, this earth and uh, we have an ecosystem and there is air on the surface of the earth the wind would be there and in some areas uh, the wind uh, blows at higher speeds so meaning that at those areas the wind energy is uh, high and we could utilize that energy to run something uh, better for example wind turbine solar energy as long as we have the sun and we have the earth we would have solar radiation and that solar radiation contains radiant energy solar energy and it could be utilized so solar is also a, an example of renewable energy geothermal energy actually the earth core is extremely um, uh, extremely at high temperature the earth core is made of molten uh, rock which is uh, magma and uh, the temperature is very very high and uh, normally as we move away from the core the surface of the earth the temperature decreases heat is energy so we could utilize that heat and the heat which is present in the uh, interior or near the interior or near the core of the earth is actually known as geothermal energy and we could utilize that energy and that energy would be present as long as we have this planet earth biomass biomass is also regarded as a renewable energy because we are making that energy from the trees and plants so as long as we have an ecosystem we have uh, trees and plants on the planet earth so we could make uh, biomass uh, energy so these are the examples of renewable energy sources and we are trying to utilize these uh, energy resources this is the comparison of renewable energy sources since with the passage of time 
since as the technology is uh, advancing or changing with the pace of time so the utility of these renewable energy sources on the application and usage of uh, these uh, renewable energy sources also changes with time uh, and it would be very clear when we discuss this slide as you see here this is the pie chart for 2010 2017 and this is for 2020 the dark purple stands for wind and the light purple stands for solar and the a little bit uh, uh, light uh, pinkish or uh, pinkish purple is solar thermal is solar thermal and uh, geothermal this is a geothermal uh, biomass is a uh, light green and uh, hydro uh, small hydro hydro is actually the uh, uh, dark green so you could see that in 2010 this is the uh, contribution coming from the wind uh, energy uh, and which is 198 uh, gigawatt which is almost 45.3 percent whereas uh, the contribution coming from the uh, hydro uh, was 112 gigawatt which was 25.6 uh, percent biomass contribution that time was 77 gigawatt 17.6 percent and so on you could see also the other contribution in 2017 what happens in 2017 then is as you see that the contribution of uh, hydro has decreased from 26 uh, percent to 11.7 uh, percent and similarly the contribution of bio has decreased biomass has decreased from 70 uh, from 17.6 percent to 10 percent the contribution of wind uh, was almost uh, same 45.3 percent and 44.2 percent however uh, the contribution of solar pv uh, has increased because in 2010 the technology uh, to fabricate uh, to uh, to fabricate the solar uh, panels was uh, not so sophisticated the technology was expensive and the nut uh, product cost was too much high uh, to be afforded by the uh, uh, by the uh, people whereas in 2017 with the passage of time as the technology has, it has advanced we we have new micro and nano fabrication uh, technology uh, to fabricate the solar low cost uh, solar panels and nowadays as the uh, price of the solar panel has decreased uh, because of that uh, the consumption and utilization of the uh, solar pv has increased from 8.7 percent to 32.4 percent and when, then when we see it into 2020 the utilization of hydro uh, has again further decreased to 8.9 percent and the bio utilization biomass utilization has also decreased uh, which is now 8.3 percent whereas uh, the wind wind is almost the same 41.6 uh, percent and uh, the solar pv has increased uh, it has jumped to 39.6 percent so it jumped from to 8.7 percent in 2010 to 39.6 percent to uh, in 2020 so nowadays you could see a tremendous change in the utilization of the um, renewable energy sources you could see complete change uh, here the main change is actually the utilization of the solar energy it doesn't mean that it would be like this uh, in the coming years or maybe in the coming years the uh, actually depending upon other circumstances uh, the pie chart would be completely different in maybe in 2025 or 2000. 
2020 or maybe in 2050 we would have some other uh, we would be utilizing some other uh, energy sources and maybe we would be not needing these renewable energy or maybe we would be more dependent on these renewable energy in order to uh, in order to uh, actually handle the problems of uh, greenhouse gases or pollution etc so <clears throat> renewable energy sources as we discussed we have radiant solar energy so from uh, radiant solar energy we are doing solar heating we are operating solar uh, power plants and we are uh, generating uh, uh, energy using photovoltaic cells biomass energy we have two applications direct application by direct application we means combustion of uh, biomass and indirect application is actually chemical conversion to biofuel wind energy as <clears throat> It is the energy which is because of the uh, blowing wind, high speed wind. Hydro energy, as we discussed, that the energy which is present in the flowing water, which is in the form of the rivers, the streams, and the waves which are actually uh, moving inside the ocean. Geothermal energy, and with geothermal energy, with wind energy, we are operating uh, wind turbines. With hydro energy, we are operating hydro turbines and geothermal energy are is used uh, in um, geothermal power plants. It has direct use. Uh, by direct use, we mean that we are using geothermal to energy to heat up um, for heating purposes. Uh, we are using this as a heat pumps to uh, heat up the interiors of the building, etc. Ocean energy uh, is actually by ocean energy we mean uh, uh, tidal energy. Energy which is because of the waves, which is because of the tides which are actually uh, moving inside the ocean. It is actually some form of uh, ocean energy is actually the form of hydro energy. Hydro energy, uh, 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 hydro energy uh, is actually the energy which is present in the flowing uh, water and this to be more specifically the energy which is present in the flowing rivers and we are trying to utilize uh, that energy. So in uh, hydro uh, energy uh, production what we do, we uh, damp the water. So here you could see that this is a, a cross-section view of the uh, hydropower plant. And here you see uh, the picture of a large dam. This is a, a structure of the dam. The water has been stored. Uh, this is the natural uh, path of the flowing water, which is a river. So that water has been dammed. With the help of the uh, dam it has been stored here and normally that stored water has the uh, potential energy it has the uh, potential energy and that energy is because of the head of the water above the uh, ground level and that energy that uh, <coughs> pressure head is actually uh, is used to generate the energy. So this is the penstock and through the penstock the water from the uh, dam uh, is taken up to the uh, turbines. These, is, these are the uh, rotors of the turbines and as the water flows through the penstock and then that water the energy which is present in the water it is converted into the mechanical energy by mechanical energy we mean the rotation of the rotor and the rotation of the shaft so uh, in such a way we convert the uh, hydro energy the hydro energy into mechanical energy and these uh, hydraulic turbines are then actually coupled with the electrical generator 
the electrical generator actually convert the mechanical energy into the electrical energy so then uh, that mechanical energy which is produced by the turbines is converted into the electrical energy and with the uh, through the uh, transformer that energy is either distributed or it is supplied to the uh, main uh, grid so this is the way uh, with which the hydro energy is actually converted into the uh, usable energy and mostly we are uh, at the end we are converting it to the electrical energy because it is easy to transport the electrical energy from one place to another place to the uh, cable uh, mechanical transfer of the mechanical energy is impossible not feasible to be transmitted over a long distances so the easy way is to convert the mechanical energy which is produced here into the electrical energy so advantages of uh, hydro energy cheap low operate low cost um, it is the lowest uh, low cost energy uh, which could be produced cheap to operate long life it has a long life and lower operating cost <coughs> the operating cost is very low lower operating cost than all other power plants so hydro power plants the energy which is produced by the hydro power plants it would have a lower operating cost than all the other power plants which are producing uh, uh, energy for the uh, main grid uh, of the country it is a renewable energy through the uh, hydrological uh, cycle normally uh, the water uh, actually goes into the ocean and then from the ocean that uh, water evaporates it uh, evaporates and it uh, goes in the atmosphere and then the wind takes that uh, air which has the water vapors to hilly areas or to other uh, parts of the uh, earth where again it is uh, when cold down the water vapor condenses and in the form of uh, rain and snow it <coughs> it again comes to the uh, ground and again it changes into <coughs> a river initially it changes into streams and then uh, rivers and then those river waters when reaches the uh, dam they are stored there and then they are utilized again high yield this energy has high yield uh, lower energy cost uh, than any other uh, method pretty uh, plenty full throughout the uh, entire uh, earth we have tremendous amount of uh, rivers streams uh, which could be utilized uh, to uh, uh, produce uh, useful energy some countries depend almost entirely on it not intermittent the reservoir is large enough intermittent means uh, if the energy is sometimes available sometimes not available then it means intermittent energy but if we have a large a reservoir so that we could store the uh, water even uh, off peak uh, river seasons and we have still enough uh, water uh, we have a large reservoir then we would have no problem of load shedding etc reservoirs have multiple uses the dam which we uh, make to store store the water it has multiple uh, usage for example with that we could control the flood downstream uh, the water which we stored it could be used for drinking purposes after uh, passing through the uh, treatment so we could use uh, we could treat that water we could convert that into uh, drinking water and then we could utilize 
aquaculture we could uh, actually uh, for example uh, you would have a fish uh, you could uh, have fish there and other uh, recreation you could also use for other recreation uh, purposes for example picnics people are coming to the dam and they they are utilizing uh, the dam uh, they are doing boating there or they they, they take a ride over, over the speed board etc less air pollution than fossil fuel combustion Disadvantages, human population displacement. When we are making a dam, so actually uh, normally it is actually uh, grabbing a large uh, area. So in majority of the cases, uh, normally humans, uh, human population have been displaced. More significant breeding grounds uh, for diseases because we are uh, storing the water the water will be stagnant and in the stagnant water there is more chances uh, that germs microbes would grow at faster rate it could be uh, could be the cause of certain diseases reduces availability of water downstream this is another disadvantage when we are uh, making a dam in the path of the flowing river then and we are storing the water so it would reduce the availability of water downstream ecosystem impacts what would be the uh, ecosystem impact of a large dam uh, barriers to uh, migrating fish so normally uh, we are putting a barrier to the fish which is actually which was coming from the sea into the rivers or which was actually moving upstream uh, to reach their uh, upstream in the river to reach their uh, breeding places so we are putting a barrier for the fish similarly the fishes which would be actually migrating from the upstream of the river into the ocean so we are putting a barrier there so that would be a very big uh, impact it could have a very big impact on the ecosystem loss of bi biodiversity both upstream and downstream so since we are uh, stopping the flow of the water or reducing the flow of the water so downstream what would be happening downstream the biodiversity that is the plants and the crops which were previously utilizing that water they would die with the passage of time and we would lose biodiversity downstream similarly upstream also for example uh, since we are uh, reducing the flow of the water so upstream uh, the width of the river could increase so it would have a negative effect on the biodiversity upstream coastal erosion uh, and the coastal area because we are reducing the flow of the water which was actually going into the uh, uh, sea and uh, normally that uh, flow has been decreased because of the uh, dam so there would be a coastal erosion reduces nutrient flow dissolved and particulate also we are putting a barrier in the uh, path of a naturally flowing river we are stopping everything so it would also reduce the natural flow of nutrients which was happening because of the river water pollution problems also occur because of the stagnant uh, water because we are reducing uh, the speed of the uh, river by putting a dam so we would have low dissolved oxygen in that water it would increase the uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, toxicity 
and other uh, dissolved oxygen related problems siltation is also a huge problem normally because the water which is actually flowing in the river it is also bringing dust mud ash with itself and that actually it is uh, also uh, getting stored in the dam with the help of which siltation occurs in the uh, dam and the capacity of the dam actually decreases which would uh, shortens the dam life some more disadvantages uh, air pollution actually may be a significant source of greenhouse gases such as methane nitric oxide carbon dioxide etc decommissioning decommissioning the commissioning uh, of dams is also a big problem the life of the dam is um, 100 years 200 years 300 years but at the end uh, we have to decommission the structure and when this happened it would be a huge problem because again if you remove if we have a dam there for 200 or 300 years and then which was used to store the water and on the downstream actually for 200 3 years uh, a population have been produced or cities have been produced villages have been produced depending upon that of uh, flow of water and then when we remove the dam and again the flow of water uh, suddenly increases because of um uh, uh natural flowing water then it would be a uh, tremendous it would have a tremendous uh, effect on the lives of the uh, human beings and also it would have effect on the biodiversity downstream the size issue many of the above problems are significantly worse for larger dams if we have large dam these problems are more worse however small dams have shorter lifetimes less capacity and are uh, more intermittent because they have less capacity so with the passage of uh, time when in off season off season we have less water then if there is no water in the dam there would be have no energy wind energy wind energy is the energy which is actually present in the high speed uh, wind so that energy uh, is actually converted into uh, electrical energy with the help of these uh, wind turbines so wind turbine is actually a mechanical system uh, it converts the wind energy into mechanical energy mechanical energy means the motion of the rotor of the wind turbine or the rotation of the shaft of the wind turbine and that shaft is then actually coupled to the electrical generator and the electrical generator converts the mechanical energy into the electrical energy so here you see that we have uh, wind turbines which have been installed on a hilly hilly area because on the hilly area the wind velocity or the wind energy is significant similarly here these wind turbines are offshore uh, wind turbines so you could see they are located in the sea there is more possibility uh, that we would have uh, actually uh, high uh, uh, wind velocity or high wind energy which could be utilized advantages of wind energy high net uh, energy yield renewable and free very clean source of energy no population no uh, no pollution that is air or water during operation it has a long operating life low operating or maintenance cost can be quickly built not too expensive 
in past actually uh, the technology was not so sophisticated so uh, it was very difficult to fabricate the wind turbines especially the blades of the turbine but now because of the advanced technology or advancement and progress and development in the materials so now we would have the blades blades are now actually made of uh, fiberglass which is actually uh, very which has a very good strength and uh, low weight the strength to weight ratio is very less uh, is very high the strength to weight ratio of the fiberglass is very high so similarly we have sophisticated fabrication techniques and we have now uh, equipments to uh, take these uh, large uh, blades they could be transported from the industry manufacturing industry to hilly areas or it could be moved through the oceans so nowadays it's uh, not a very expensive technology now almost competitive competitive with hydro and uh, fossil fuels land can be used for other purposes the land beneath the wind turbine uh, could be used for agriculture it could be used for uh, other purposes also so it is not just like because as we discussed that in the case of the uh, hydro power plant we have to make a dam and normally we have to displace a large number of population from there but this would be not the case here in case of the wind turbines can combine wind and agriculture farming disadvantages energy uh, shortage issues it is an intermittent source of energy sometimes uh, we would have wind at very high speed sometimes we would have wind at moderate speed and sometimes we would have wind with very less velocity so we need a backup for example uh, when we have a, a peak energy we have peak wind energy and we would produce more energy and we we could we, we have to store that energy uh, for the off peak uh wind blowing or must be connected to the electrical grid so wind turbines must be connected to the electrical grid so it would be giving uh, its uh, energy production to the electrical grid and from the electrical grid the energy would be coming from the other sources and then it would be supplied to the consumer only practical in areas that are windy enough visual pollution could be a problem because we are putting uh, huge uh, wind turbines there and a large number of wind turbines so it would produce the visual pollution uh danger to birds um normally because we have wind turbine uh and the blades are uh, moving so they are actually uh, danger to the birds uh, life but now actually nowadays we have new uh slow turning designs which are actually eliminating uh, this problem low energy density of wind must use large areas of land so since actually uh, it has a lower energy density so meaning that at a specific locality uh, we have to install a number of uh, wind turbines in case of hydro normally we normally install uh, one two or mostly three four turbines to grab all that hydro energy or convert that uh, hydro energy into the electrical energy 
However, uh, in case of wind turbines, uh, we have to actually install a huge number of uh, wind turbines to actually capture that available wind energy. Radiant uh, solar energy. The energy which is present in the solar radiations. So, uh, sun is actually the source of energy. Uh, it is actually providing us uh, light and heat, and that light and heat is available in daytime on the uh, ground. So, we could utilize uh, that uh, energy, and as long as the earth is there, the sun is there this energy would be available to us. So how solar uh, energy uh, is actually converted into useful energy? So we have a number of uh, techniques which we use, we are using. One of, we, one of the technique is the utilization of uh, solar PV uh, panels or solar cells to convert the uh, solar energy directly into electrical energy, whereas the other methods are uh, that we are uh, using the solar energy to produce uh, steam, and then we use that steam into uh, steam turbines to produce the mechanical energy, and then the mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy with the help of the electrical turbine. Here you see a schematic. Uh, you see this schematic, this is the solar uh, collectors which are actually uh, uh, <coughs> on which when the solar radiation falls, those solar rays are concentrated on these uh, tubing. So here you see tubing, these are the solar collectors. So when the cold water is fed and it flows through these tubing here and as they pass over the collectors. So what happens that uh, water is heated and it is changed into uh, steam. So we here on this side we would have a high pressure, high temperature steam. So from the solar radiations, from the solar radiation we are producing high pressure, high temperature steam and uh, the purpose once we have high pressure, high temperature steam meaning that we have energy and then that energy is used uh, for uh, different purposes. For example, we could use uh, that energy. For example, here we are taking uh, some portion of the high pressure, high temperature steam and it is, uh, this is a heat exchanger, so the hot fluid is on the tube side, whereas the cold fluid which is coming from this cold tank, it is on the shelf side. And the heat transfer, only the heat transfer takes place from the hot fluid into the cold fluid because of which the cold water is changed into the hot water. And that hot water could be used for uh, industrial purposes or it could be used for the domestic purposes as well. The once this steam, high pressure high steam is um, utilized here, it changes into again liquid water and it would again uh, be supplied to this uh, main uh, pipeline or tubing. So some portion is used for heating. The remaining portion is supplied to the uh, steam power plant. So this is actually the schematic of the steam power plant. Here some portion of that high pressure, high temperature steam is used in the reheater. And the remaining portion is supplied to the superheater. This is a steam generator. This portion is actually is known as the steam generator. So the liquid water which is coming from the condenser, this is the condenser, here we have low pressure liquid water and the pressure is increased with this feed water pump, the feed water pump would increase its pressure from low pressure to high pressure, here we would have high pressure 
water, the high pressure water would go into the economizer. Economizer, since the steam is uh, coming or if it is flowing, the superheater, then vaporizer, and then in the economizer. But that high pressure uh, water still have uh, heat, and we don't want to waste that heat. So actually, that heat is transferred to the high pressure liquid because of which the temperature of the high pressure liquid would slightly increase and the temperature of the high pressure uh, uh, fluid which is coming from the uh, vap vaporizer it would reduce and then what we do from the economizer the high pressure water is then uh, supplied into the vaporizer. In the vaporizer it is also a heat exchanger. The heat actually transfer from the high pressure, high temperature fluid into the uh, water and the water is changed into uh, steam, dry saturated steam and then that dry saturated steam flows into the superheater and in the superheater further heat transfer takes place from the high temperature fluid into the high pressure uh, high temperature saturated steam and it is converted into superheating steam superheated steam and that superheated steam is then expanded into the uh, high pressure turbine this is the high pressure turbine so it is expanded and that energy is converted uh, into mechanical energy the shaft of the turbine would rotate and once the expansion takes place from the high pressure to the intermediate pressure then we would have dry saturated steam that dry saturated steam at intermediate pressure is supplied to the superheater and in the superheater the uh, hot, hot fluid is coming high temperature fluid is coming uh, from the high temperature fluid side and the heat transfer takes place that dry saturated in uh, steam at intermediate pressure is again converted into superheated steam at intermediate pressure and it would be expanded inside the low pressure turbine and after the expansion we would have a mechanical energy so the shaft would be rotating so this is a two stage turbine high pressure turbine low pressure turbine both are actually uh, on the uh, same shaft and that shaft is connected to the electrical uh, generator. The electrical generator converts the, that mechanical energy into the electrical energy, which is then supplied to the grid. Once we have the uh, low pressure uh, steam, low pressure uh, under saturated uh, steam, uh, that is actually uh, supplied into the condenser because we have to again change it into the uh, liquid water. So in the condenser the cold water is coming from the cooling tower and that cold water is used uh, to condense the uh, satur uh, <coughs> under saturated uh, steam into liquid water. So we have liquid water at low pressure again this feed water pump would increase its pressure and it would be supplied to the economizer. economizer. And here you could see the uh, cycle uh, of the uh, uh, the fluid, which is actually bringing the uh, solar energy uh, in the form of the high temperature, high pressure steam, or <coughs> high um, temperature, uh, high pressure uh, fluid. So here we have uh, this pump. This pump is uh, used to circulate the fluid in the collectors. Uh, so this way the solar energy is actually utilized to do heating and it is utilized to produce electrical energy with the help of a uh, steam power plant. So how it works, solar power plants, steam produced to turn turbines. Uh, we also use the uh, solar energy uh, to do uh, heating, so it is known as solar heating.
so there are two methods one is active method whereas the other is uh, passive method in passive method or passive system absorbs and stores heat from the sun's from the sun directly within a structure so here you see that uh, this is a schematic that how we use a uh, passive method for the uh, solar heating so you could see uh, that we have uh, sun and this is the uh, window uh, super window which has a glass and once the solar radiation is enter into the uh, room it uh, brings energy with itself and that energy uh, would be trapped here and somehow the energy is trapped and uh, with the, with that the temperature of the room would increase similarly uh, the structure is made such that the stone floor and wall uh, for uh, heat storage so here you see that we have a uh, heavy insulation so that the heat is trapped inside the room so heavy insulation we have a uh, super uh, windows we have a number of panels of uh, glass uh, so that the heat is trapped inside the room and it is not uh, uh, leaked out easily here this is the active system in the active system we have a a uh, solar heater here so collectors absorb uh, solar energy a pump supplies part of a building's heating and water heating needs for example here this is a solar collector and uh, the sun uh, rays are falling on the solar collector and uh, we are uh, pumping uh, water the water uh, when is circulated in the collector it takes the heat uh, from the solar radiation and we would have high temperature uh, water and that high uh, temperature water this is high temperature water tank and then uh, that once we have hot water it could be utilized for um, uh, heating it could be utilized for direct use here we have a heat exchanger what this heat exchanger is doing this uh, hot water is flowing in the uh, heat exchanger so this is the hot fluid and the cold fluid is uh, normally uh, let's say it's a oil or which is circulating so the transfer takes place between these two fluids so we would have high temperature fluid here and that high temperature fluid is uh, transported to the tubes and here we have another uh, heat exchanger uh heat to house radiators or force air duct so here we have a, a radiator uh, in which this oil would flow and it would impart its heat to the room air because of which the room air temperature would increase to the comfortable level so in such a way we would be doing the uh, heating of the interior of the building and after it imparts its uh, energy into the room air it would be at uh, relatively at low temperature and it is recirculated back to the heat exchanger so this way uh, we are uh, using uh, utilizing the solar energy for the uh, heating of the interiors of the building so solar heat so here you see uh, the uh, schematic Uh, that how we uh, do uh, heating with the uh, solar uh, collectors so this is the schematic of the solar collector you could see the tube and then we have a, a black surface and on the top of the black surface we have a glass panel so this is the collector so cold water when it is circulated uh, through the collector its temperature increases and uh, that hot water is utilized uh for producing uh, warm water and it is also utilized to do the uh, room heating so these are collectors when sun falls on it the water is heated up it is stored in these tanks and later on you could use that hot water for direct use that is for for, for 
uh, washing your hands, washing uh, yourself, taking bath, or uh, could be used to uh, wash dishes, etc. Or it could be also used. This hot water could also be used to do the room heating. So also we are using the photovoltaic cells to directly convert the solar energy into the electrical energy. Here you see a picture of a uh, number of uh, solar panels which are used to directly convert the solar radiation into the electrical energy. Here this is a schematic uh, that how the uh, photovoltaic cell operates. So it is a PN junction. So when the solar uh, rays falls on it, the PN junction is excited and the, the PN junction uh, composed of uh, uh, P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor it comprise of uh, excessive electrons and uh, holes so when it is excited the electrons uh, moves uh, in one direction and the holes moves in the other direction and when they are connected so we would have current and that current could be used to do something useful you could uh, use it for other purposes so photovoltaic cells solar cells use special silicon advantages uh, renewable and free advantages of solar uh, energy high energy yield a very clean source of energy no air water pollution during operation low operating cost will pay off themselves over time disadvantages intermittent source because the solar energy is available only in daytime and also it would be not available uh, in uh, cloudy uh, climates and seasons so it is better uh, to use energy storage uh, low energy density it has low energy density so meaning that we have to put uh, a tremendous amount of solar panels in order to grab huge amount of uh, energy requires pretty much land so with that i would uh, finish my today's uh, lecture in in the uh, coming lecture we would discuss the other form of uh, renewable energies uh, sources and they uh, that are uh, geothermal energy and the biomass so thank you